Miami. Often overlooked when we have a national conversation about social change, protests, and Black Lives Matter. But not anymore. Dimeek is an independent organizer who's been joined by many in the streets of Dade County. What we did today was powerful, and we're going to continue to do it, and we're going to continue to support the national uprisings that are happening all across the country. All power to all of the people, Black power. Hello there, Dimeek. How are you? I'm doing well on yourself. I'm good. I'm good. I'm so good to talk to you. I've been following you, following you on Instagram. You are making so much movement in Miami, which is my hometown. And I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank thank you. you for um, um, holding down my city. Like, I feel like I would have been right there on yeah. the right hand side of you if I was mm-hmm. home right now. Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm taking care of not only Day County, but I'm really, it's really important to me that I'm showing solidarity with the entire Black community in America right now. Yeah. And so you, I, I'm doing it for Brooklyn the same way I'm doing it for Dade County. I'm doing it for King County. I'm no doing doubt. it for, no for doubt. Humberland <laughs> County. I'm doing it for all, all the counties of my lives that that influenced me and had a had a impact on my revolutionary work and ideals. So um, to formally introduce you, like I said, I came across you on Instagram. Um, my first introduction to you was the whole CVS looting video that went viral that was my first introduction to you then i was just like who is this you know then i took an interest in in who you were um so that's why i wanted to talk to you but you are an independent organizing organizing is your thing why is organizing so so important to you well organizing is important to me because the black community having sovereignty and having autonomy is important to me and before we can have sovereignty and autonomy, we have to be organized amongst ourselves. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I learned was that before you can get to autonomy and sovereignty, you got to get to organizing. And before you can get to organizing, you just got to gather the people. You got to right. gather the people before you can organize them. And once you organize them, you can start to demand autonomy and sovereignty. So right. that's what got me into it. Where'd you get those teachings from? I'm curious. Cause that's something um, that you that's something that you learn. Yeah, it's it's a lot of trial by fire. I do a lot of indo, a lot of independent research. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't come from a radical family or anything of that nature. You feel mm-hmm. me? I've slowly been radicalized just through. I feel like the just my era. I was I'm a I'm a '90s kid. I, I feel like I got the internet at the perfect juncture in my life. I wasn't born with the internet. You feel me? At my fingertips. Yeah. Right. But I got it at about tween, preteen era, where right. during my development years, so I feel like that played a part of my radicalization a lot. But my teachings really come from just the old teachers like John Henry Clark and yeah. Marcus Garvey and Patrice Lumumba. And yeah, these these, these Pan Africanist leaders that was that was out here really speaking like rhetoric towards people and like, yo, we, we, we can have our sovereignty, we can have our autonomy, but we gotta fight for it. And it's necessary evils that we have to partake in to achieve these things, do you feel me? Like, cause yeah. we're all, well, cause we are at war, we are a people under siege, so. Yeah, tell, tell so you're from Miami, you born and raised in Miami? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually, uh, I've been in Miami for about six years. Wow. I live in Overtown. Uh, I'm a nomadic kid. I'm an army brat. I was originally born in Brooklyn, New York. My mother hey, home. I'm in Brooklyn, BK. BK, hey, baby. Hey, <laughs> I, you feel me? Yeah. You know, they always going to claim me. You feel me? I got to claim them because they going to claim gonna right. be somebody in Brooklyn like, what? You I like, love it. Born in St. John, son. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, I'm a, I've, been, I've been raised all around the country. I've only lived in one city consecutively in my whole life, and that's Miami, Florida, Dade County, Overtown to be specific. You wow. feel me? I might not be a towner for life, but I'm a towner going forward in my life. You feel me? Yeah, nah, you're a towner for life, babe. You, you feel town. me? Like, I, I feel like I represent it well. I care about this community, and this community has cared for me, man. Because Dade County can, I've seen Dade County eat people alive, and they've done nothing yeah. but embrace me. So I'm appreciative of it for sure. You know, it's interesting that you're from Dade. Um, you're from, you're living in Overtown. It's it's very interesting because Overtown, if people don't know Miami, Florida, Overtown has a history, such a rich history 
and the African American story, um, the immigrant story for Miami, the, the way Overtown was structured so that we can make sure that the people of color were in one designated area in Miami. It's a, it's a very rich history that I advise people to kind of read on when you read about Miami. It's not just South Beach. It's not just you know, um, beaches and sun, sunshine. It's, it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's a lot of history, and especially in the city of Overtown. So research on it, research on it. I, I always advise people to research on Overtown. Um, so I love that you are walking in the lineage and the spirit of Overtown as you're protesting. What do you, who's protesting with you? I, I'm curious with, with Miami, I'm always kind of like, but who's well, got my man's back? You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people have have, have voiced that same concern because they know right. that uh, Dade County is not known for its protests and its activism and things of that nature. You feel me? It's a tourist town. It's a party town. It's a lot of first generation uh, people here who don't have a, I feel like don't have the full context of American politics. They mm -hmm. come here with very utopian ideals because America intentionally destabilized their country and so they came here to a stable country to seek a stable life so they don't have the full context of american imperialism and, and things of that nature so they're just not politicized people you feel me right. in dade county but it's slowly getting there through my generation you feel me it's a lot of young people that, that that's out there with me but but like i said uh like I've said before, it's a lot of families out there marching with me. A lot of people, like a lot of white Latinos, a lot of white people that are just wow. curious and just want to be out there and show solidarity. They don't fully understand why they're necessarily out there, but they understand that it's something unjust and they want to be on the right side of history. And they just kind of just showing up and putting their bodies out there and listening to people such as myself, like try to give them the context and the political context to what's happening around the country right now with this civil unrest and these national and this whole national uprising. Right, right, right. So in Dade County, we really just, what's important to me is that we just show solidarity with the rest of the country and the rest of the, of the black community and however they deem necessary to, to, do the uprising in their cities, you feel me? If you have the necessary manpower and organization to completely burn down and dismantle a police department like they did in Minneapolis, then hey, more power to you. More I'm power. In, I'm in full support <laughs> of you, you feel me? But here in yeah. Dade County, we gotta move accordingly and we gotta read the room and see who's actually out there. So Dade County is just here to show support is to politicize and try to radicalize the people here in Dade County so they have a full understanding of American uh, imperialism and just spreading the resources of the of the National Guard and the law enforcement as thin as possible. So they have to send $6.2 million down to Miami because we're flooding the streets and they can't spend that money to stamp out the rebellion in Minneapolis and they can't use those resources to try to snuff out Atlanta because they have to because Dade County is taking the streets too at the tip of the country, you feel me? Yeah. So that's the point of our protest. And, and as, as, as far as me as an independent organizer, that's the point of me getting the people out there in the streets. Yes, and talk, talking about um, what they're bringing to Miami, I know that one of the things mayor, um, your, the city of Miami mayor, Mayor Jimenez, um, yeah. And I'm probably mispronouncing his last name. My apologies. It don't matter. It don't matter. He'll mispronounce <laughs> it too. <laughs> but he, um, I know that one of the things that he said is like he didn't want the National Guards in Miami. He didn't want, um, he yeah. didn't want that type of presence in Dade County. Yeah. But he also wants to meet with you. Like he's, no. he's asked to meet with yourself and the other protesters. No, right? he did not. He asked to meet with the people that was protecting the, the CVS for a photo op. Uh, and then when myself and my, my fellow organizers refused, he found two random white kids and had some photo op with them who I don't even believe were present at the, at the, at the protest. Uh, mm -hmm. Mayor Jimenez is, is just a, he's a, he's a symptom of a larger institutional problem in the country, so I, I try not to hyper-focus on him, you mm -hmm. feel me? Because I don't want to like tear down his character or anything of that nature, but his intentions as a politician is 
just as slimy as the rest of them, if you ask me. Mm, mm. Yeah, I was I was hoping that that was promising that he would start thinking about dismantling the um, Dade County Police Department, but I see uh, he that hasn't. That. I, it, it, so far as, as my knowledge, he hasn't uh, he hasn't spoken on the abolishment of the police department. But the, the police in Dade County, like I, I say this a lot in my rallies, they're they're here to protect the livelihood of the wealthy, not the lives of the working class. Absolutely. You feel me? They're not here to protect us. We've been keeping each, each other safe in these communities for a long time. You feel me? The police enforce the, the laws on the back end after we've protected ourselves. Yeah. You feel me? Like after we've already called to summon them in, then they come and arrest and, and haul off whoever. But that's our communities taking care of ourselves. So. And that's something that has been happening in Miami for years. I could tell mm -hmm. you that that is something you walked into. And, and I'm so glad you made mention to that because our communities down in Miami definitely have some type of society where they protect yeah. each other. Um, and it's and it's beautiful from Liberty City yeah. to, to all the way to Carroll City. Like that's Dade County has taught me so much. And I've absorbed so much from Dade County. That's why I'm so grateful to be able to give back to Dade County in this fashion. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to ask you about was was COVID, because I, I know that you're out yeah. there protesting. This is where the auntie come out. Um, auntie's yeah, about to come out in two minutes. Auntie's What's about up, to come auntie? out in two minutes. <laughs> What's up, uh, I got you. How, babes, how are you protecting yourself? How, how are you? Um, I, try to, I try to limit my, my physical contact with people as much as possible. Um, I try to respect, I, we try to make an announcement that if you're elderly or children are at high risk, try to stay to the outskirts of the crowd, things of that nature. But this great social change that we're trying to make here is a lot of people are like myself are willing to put my health on the line for this revolution. I'm willing to, to make that risk to, to fix the world for future generations. And a lot of people feel similarly. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a necessary evil. It's yeah. a necessary evil. I get it. Is there a, do you see a silver lining? Do you see hope for the future? Absolutely. This is the hope that that my generation is is willing to take to the streets like, like we are in our, in our mass numbers. And the silver lining of this COVID quarantine, 40 million people unemployed is that 40 million people are unemployed, but it's 40 million people that are active and willing to try to change this system because it's been actively failing us. So now, because of this unemployment, people are questioning the system of capitalism itself. They're questioning the system of governance of its, of, of in itself. And, yep. and how is it going to really manifest during times of great social need? And it's it hasn't worked out. So people are taking the streets and we're looking around and we're like, yo, are you upset? Why are you upset? Why are you upset? I'm, I'm upset because of this. I'm upset. So what are we going to do about it? How are we going to move? And that's the silver lining. It's just like-minded people are finding each other. You found me. I, you feel me? We're having this conversation. This is the silver lining. We're living inside of it right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you.